So what do you know about the Community of Christ Church? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome again to the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and we're in part two with uh, Laura Pennock. Thank you so much again sure. for joining us. We got to hear a little of your story and how you kind of transitioned out of the LDS church and uh, found fellowship in the RLDS. After going through other churches, yeah. and you know, did you feel like, I guess one thing that I wasn't really 100% sure about was you felt like you had this relationship with Jesus. Did it change from your Mormon life to your on the other side life? Yeah, I don't and know. And in what way? Yeah, I don't know that it really changed. Um, Did you understand but grace I, but, uh, as yeah, a Mormon? Yeah, grace has become a big, you know, a much bigger, and Jesus, a much bigger thing. And, and more about Jesus' righteousness yeah, than yeah. our own works of yeah. righteousness. And, and it's a lot less about the leaders and the prophets of the restoration than it is about the focus is on Jesus. Okay. And, you know, Jesus' ministry and how we are to, we are called to, to be like Jesus and that we are called to follow in his footsteps and to, to yeah. live our lives as best we can according to um, what his concerns were. And don't you feel a freedom in that, in that now compared to the, <laughs> at least I used to feel like, well, I guess I didn't actually feel the bondage, but I do sense it now that I'm out. You know, yeah. less pride, less judgment. Yeah, far less uh, pride, less yeah. judgment, less uh, yeah. less hierarchy, less um, <laughs> less um, rigidity. Really, yeah. there's it's not so much that you have to live up to certain check. You don't have that's checklist anymore. Right. You have, you know, you 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 tune yourself to God and to to Jesus's um, the way the Jesus's concerns, yeah. and and you live your life that way rather than trying to um, virtue signal with, you know, wearing the proper clothing and going to the temple so many times and holding certain callings and no. being, you know, sort of things like that. Like you so. say, the checklist. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm imposing on Laura just a little bit. She's actually a, a counselor, what we'd call in the LDS church, a counselor in the bishop break. You're, that's your calling at present, right? Yeah. What's the official? I am a uh, member of the pastorate leadership team. Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> but I'm taking advantage a little bit of her in a selfish way because I knew or know very little about the community of Christ, but I do know that the RLDS church underwent a major change and, uh, ex and kind of made some changes. And we're going to go through those different kinds of things that uh, the church does, but maybe just as a background and a history from what I picked up a little bit is that, of course, uh, Joseph Smith had ordained uh, his son, Joseph Smith III, uh, as, a, as a successor, at least that's a claim that they make. And uh, Emma Smith didn't come with Brigham Young and the, the main group here, but uh, in 1844, of course, Joseph Smith was killed. Mm -hmm. And then in 1860, I guess Joseph Smith III organized the church. Reorganized right? the church, yeah. He Reorganized was, it. Yeah, there was, um, people had come to him and said, will you please take um, take leadership and reorganize the church? And he took his time. He said, I don't know that I'm, I don't know that that is what I'm called to do. And so he took the time, he took several years to um, to go on his own sort of spiritual journey of discerning what it, what, what his role should be and and where he should be and, and whether or not he should reorganize the church. And then he finally did. Be between 1844 and 1860, there were a lot of splinter groups. There I guess were. people were totally fractured. Not everybody came yeah. to, to Utah. Yeah. Uh, the population, I think I read, was about 12,000 in Nauvoo. And of yeah. course, at some point, only 147 or 27, whatever it was, came on July 24th, 1847 mm -hmm. here to Salt Lake Valley. But I'm sure there were regular Mormons along the way. But yeah. anyway, so he took his time and, and finally did organize the church yeah, with Emma's support. Uh -huh. She was she was there with him. She stayed there. I guess she le left a little bit 
or left Nauvoo a little bit, but then came back and yeah, she and sort lived of lived there most of her. Primarily. I think most of the rest of her life in yeah. Nauvoo, um, yeah. kind of you know, her husband was buried there. She had children buried there, and yeah. um, she did not. She did not like Brigham Young and. Um, Go Emma. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of the major differences at the church at that time, 1860, was they didn't believe in polygamy, mm -hmm. didn't follow polygamy. Um, did they accept the Book of Abraham at that point? I don't think the Community of Christ or the RLDS has ever had the Book of Abraham, and I'm not sure exactly when. I know that Brigham Young must have canonized it in in the Utah Terrence. territories, okay. because I don't. From what I understand, it's never been a part of the canon of Community of Christ. The Book of Mormon has, and the Doctrine and Covenants, and of course the, the Bible, which was the King James Version for a long time, right. and Community of Christ um, as the RLDS uh, subscribed to the One True Church uh, theology, and they, um, they, they taught that, and they were... Um, it was until the 1960s that that they were deep into this this one true church theology and or claims or, and restoration yeah kind restoration of stuff yeah. yeah and um, in the 1960s the leaders of the of the church decided that they needed um, some they needed some biblical literacy they needed to be um, more biblically literate. How interesting, and what yeah. prompted that? I'm not sure what did, and I think... Now, that fellow that we met a couple of Sundays mm -hmm. ago mentioned that someone came to one of your leaders, uh -huh. the president, I guess, I don't know if it was Mr. McMurray or not, whatever you call I'm, him, but somebody said, are you going to follow Joseph Smith or are you going to follow Jesus? Yeah, that was when the was leadership... Was that really a big thing? It was really a big thing. It yeah. was like a big moment because they had gone, the leadership had gone to the local Lutheran um, seminary and said, you know, we need this, we need some Again, the biblical understanding. Yeah, we need, yeah. To, we need a little more scriptural literacy and stuff like that. And so as they progressed, they got to a point where the president of the seminary said, okay, you're going to have to choose. You can't have both. You can't have here. both. Do you think and the Mormon, church, the LDS church mm, will ever do that? No, they won't. They're too, they're too proud, aren't <laughs> they? they? <laughs> there's, I think they are. there's no learning there. It's this Well, they of... know what they know, and that's all there is to know. Yeah. So, you know, if you know what you know. Well, this is just amazing that a group of people, and we're now talking a couple of hundred to three hundred thousand people. Yeah. I read there were a hundred, eleven hundred congregations in 59 countries. So yeah. this isn't just a little group of people that decided, hey, yeah. let's start following the Bible. Yeah. This is a major shift. Yeah. I'm really proud of them yeah. for uh, they, saying, yeah. you know, that we're, mis we're missing something here. Yeah. So what and actually happened then? So they said, well, you know, he said, if you're going to have to, if there's a choice between Joseph and Jesus, who are you going to choose? And he <laughs> said, well, I guess we'll have to choose Jesus. Yeah. And so that sort of started them on this um, on this journey that, that sort of diverged from that sort of thing. But when they started giving up the ideology of the One True Church is when they um, they were going into these Asian countries where it you know they, they their approach what had been, well, we are the reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints, we're not the Mormons. And of course, they're in these Asian community, these Asian countries they where they're not even Christian. Right. And and they said, well, who are the Mormons? But what do we care? And it, yeah. So yeah. you, so it caused the the, uh, the leadership to really step back and say, if we're not the Mormons, then what and who are we? And so they s started this years long process of deciding what do we believe, what do we subscribe to, what. Do, who are we? And so that ended up. Um, and what would have been the year of that kind I of? I don't know when that was. I think that 80s, was in like 70s, the 60s, 80s. 70s ish. Okay. And then in the 1980s, they um, they they ordained women, and that was a really difficult moment in the life of the church because. Even bigger than adopting Jesus. I think, do you think? it was bigger. Um, because of the hierarchy yeah, and the, the patriarchal, yeah. and it sort of it sort of thing. splintered that, and and they feel like I mean people will talk about it even now that we didn't handle it very well. We did not. We didn't handle the the dissenters very well. Is that when the remnant church came along? Was that about then? Know. Do you know that name? The I remnant do church? know. There's well, I know that Denver Snuffer 
calls they they're the oh. remnant as well. Oh, but they? but they're um, they're break offs of Brighamites. Right. So, not, not but hard. yeah, there's the there's a lot of and I think that one at least yeah, there are several splinters well, that came from that and I don't know who they are and Well let's cover just a couple of things. When did you pick up the cross? When did the church adopt the cross? Yeah, I think that the rejection of the cross was a Brighamite thing. Um, it was in a fight. So even the reorganized church even if had the, the cross. I think they did have the cross. Oh, I didn't know. They that. were. Yeah, it was when it was when in the West here when Brigham Young got He's into a fight with the with the Catholics, Catholics and decided that the cross was a Catholic thing, and so it was you know taboo. Oh, so the RLDS As, even back then. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Never really kind of you know had this problem with the cross. Okay. And the RLDS has always been um, Trinitarian. Um, and that was in the early, really? in the Book of Mormon, if you kind of start reading fairly closely oh, I know. some of those things, it's Trinitarian. Yeah. And the, So the RLDS adopted Trinitarian yeah. media, or pretty early yeah. on. Well, I did notice you gave me a copy of the Doctrine and Covenants, mm -hmm. and of course there's even new revelations uh -huh. that your, your prophets, in fact it was interesting, I read in your hymn book, we thank thee, O God, for our prophets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is a little different wording yeah. than, than the Mormons yeah. teach or saying, but you also had an amazing grace in there, yeah. so uh, yeah. uh, that was neat. So, um, gosh, I lost that one. <laughs> um, so the Trinita Trinity then uh, has always been part of the yeah. RLD, so I didn't know that. Yeah. So they're even more Christian maybe than, than I knew. Yeah. I just they, assumed you were just... Uh, a group of Emma and yeah. Joseph the third that stayed back yeah. there and just adopted everything. So Joseph Smith and you've, you've you guys have actually done the research to to know which things were added by mm -hmm. others that weren't included. Yeah, that Joseph Smith didn't include. Yeah, things that were, the, came along yeah. later. Yeah, and the the Brighamites they had a historical department until Leonard Arrington, and that's when they their historical department has since then become. A, hagri a hagiography department, and hagiography? hagiography is <laughs> are these you know you you see these books in Desert Book about you know the the life of the prophets and stuff. You're right. It's not a biography; it's a hagiography, which makes oh their the talks person, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, well, it comments? makes the person. It creates a narrative where this person is, of course, inevitably sort of sainted, yeah. <laughs> essentially, I and you. you know the the lives of the saints. Um, in in the Catholic um, in Catholic bookstores, the lives of the saints those are uh, called hagiographies oh. because they're not actual factual biographies. They're, you know, I mean, it's it its intent is to make you see that this person was destined from the beginning to be this special, particular special, special appointed anointed person. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure. Did I miss how that comes in our conversation? But. <laughs> You, I, that you threw that candy. one in anyway. <laughs> got that one for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think about the Celestial Kingdom? Where does that fit in? Um, I noticed that you have Section 76 is yeah. still in there. I'm, the Community of Christ is less concerned with what is going to happen after we die than they are concerned with how what is happening in the here and now. What and, and what our responsibilities are towards our fellow men and towards creation and towards um, how we live our lives here. How we and, love God yeah. and our fellow men yeah. and let and God worry about yeah, the rest Yeah, let of God it. take care of the rest. It's, but trust yeah. in Jesus. Yeah. And what he, I did notice in a, in, a, in a writing, maybe it was in the Doctrine and Covenants, where someone commented that the, even the Book of Mormon is not a test of faith, whether you believe in yeah. it or not. Yeah. And that you have some of those subjective or you're allowed to do some thinking on your own. Yeah. yeah. And the Book of Mormon is, it depends on your congregation. There are some conservative con congregations who are very, you know, they're very all about the Book of Mormon. In you know, it's really important to them. And, and other congregations are not. Our particular congregation in Salt Lake, we're, we rarely speak about the Book of Mormon. Mm. But it's, it's not quoted. like you have to reject or you have to accept the Book of Mormon. It's just, it's just one of the pieces of provides literature some. there. So. Okay, interesting. How about the Word of Wisdom? The Word of Wisdom is um, is a um, as advice. 
And a word we, of wisdom. It is a word of wisdom. It is advice on okay. healthy living. And um, Community of Christ, we set up coffee every morning, and we have our coffee and conversation. And um, alcohol is alcohol is a little um, a little different. Up until very very recently, um, those who were ordained into priesthood were um, were really prohibited from had to abstain from drinking from alcohol. Yeah, wine but were, too. Yes. Okay. But it's it's come. It's starting to move in a totally different direction there. It's like, you know, you responsible choices are one of the tenets of Community of Christ. And and you, you know... A little individual yeah, responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. You know, drink responsibly. If you're going to drink, we discourage it for priesthood, but it's not something that is prohibited anymore. Oh, okay. So, yeah. And knowing Jesus drank wine, that might yeah. <laughs> make a little difference. Makes, makes a little difference. Um, tithing, for tithing, example. Tithing, we have good, um, good um, free will offerings. Okay. Um, we, generosity is one of our tenants. And, um, so cheerful and, giver. Huh? Yeah. yeah. You, give, you give out of your abundance. You give as a response to God's um, generosity to you. And, um, and it's not just money, it's tithes and it's treasure, talents, time, and testimony are all components of generous giving. So oh, I like that. we That's really you know, good. do the typical pass the plate thing and <laughs> you can give online, you can, um, you can give you know, weekly, you can, but, it's, but it's up to you and nobody's going to tell you, you know, come, come to my office and let's talk about your giving, you know, sort of thing. It's, well, I don't want to put you on the spot with this one, but Joseph Smith, uh -huh. where, where does he fit in everything? Joseph Smith is considered the founder of the Restoration Movement and um, that for a long time, Community of Christ rejected um, the, the notion that he, was, that he had practiced polygamy. They now accept that as historical, you know, the evidence yeah. is historically... The mainstream church has yeah. done the same thing in, yeah. in their and, essays. Yeah. But Joseph Smith was, uh, you know, he's, you do not have to subscribe to any sort of view of Joseph Smith um, or. So his, your, your community of Christ really evolves somewhat. I mean, yes. you're thinking and yeah. as you learn and you're willing to do that yeah. first vision, Joseph yeah, Smith's first it's, vision it's is like that. Not, not a test of faith. Um, and it's not something that I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about it in my congregation. And, really? and it, that will vary by congregation. It's okay. really, you know, that's sort of what they are people concerned about in that particular congregation. So Interesting. Well, do you have councils and conferences that kind of give direction to the different branches? or what yeah. is, Do we you have, call them wards? What do you call them? We your call them um, congregations. Congregations. Yeah. And... I, I think that they do the smaller ones they call branches okay. sometimes. So you'll hear that terminology. But they get some direction from leadership from the Um yeah, some broad, very broad. Okay. <laughs> so we've got every three years we have a world conference which takes place in Independence in the Temple in Independence. And um there are also mission center conferences and um, there every are every three years then. Yeah, right. every three years for the World Conference. And okay. and we have we elect delegates for from the congregation to go to, to, go the... to these conferences and speak on behalf of the congregation to to mm -hmm. um, any sort of legislation or um, scripture if there is a revelation that has been offered to the community. It's it's called words of counsel until mm -hmm. it is canonized and its canonization depends on these conferences, accepting them, and then sending delegates from the conference to the um, the World Conference, and then you discuss it there. And you, you know, so you and discuss it. And then it might input. get into the Doctrine yeah, and Covenants. Yeah, it might, and it may be changed, and it may be broadened or narrowed or, you know, by the time it gets to that point. But common consent is is taken very seriously and is actually exercised in Community of Christ. Hmm. So. Now, you mentioned temples. I know you have one in Kirtland. The, mm -hmm. original we temple, have the original Kirtland Temple, and then the one in Independence, uh -huh. but they're not used for what? They are open to the, the public. Mormon Church yeah. or LDS Church. They are uh, open to the public. They are used as viewed as centers of of learning and of spiritual formation, and and the one in um, Independence has a lot of people who are um, 
at headquarters, they a lot of them have their offices there, yeah. and they do a daily prayer. So you piece. don't have an endowment, no endowment or marriages for time and all eternity. No. Yours, okay, interesting. Yeah. So now was that not a Joseph Smith uh, uh, concept, the uh, I endowment and think, all that, or do you know? I think that that was something that Joseph Smith was evolving. As you know, at the time that he died through the masonry, yeah, thing and yeah, all that. and then Brigham Young took it, and I'm not sure exactly yeah. how that developed with him, but it, it that it developed into what we know today as the Mormon Temple okay. endowment and ceremony and stuff. That that's largely Brigham Young. Okay, um, just real quickly, holidays. Do you celebrate holidays? We do. All of them. We okay. do. <laughs> Um, sacrament, we, communion? Yes, communion is once a month, the first um, Sunday of the month. Um, Just curious, yeah, do you yeah. use bread and water? We use bread and we use grape juice and water. When you it's, say you bread, have, you mean uh, yeast bread? Yeah, or, yeast bread. Or, or and we all, Passover kind of bread? Yeah, or, we use just regular bread regular and we bread. also have in the center a gluten-free option. Oh. So we're <laughs> trying to be sensitive to people's dietary needs. And okay. But we use have grape juice. That's grape nice. juice and we also have water if that's what you're more comfortable with, with or if you... Oh you know, need to okay. watch your sugar or whatever. Yeah, you know? <laughs> okay, good. Um, gosh, just so many fun things. The apostasy, <laughs> did you, the apostasy, you, you mentioned getting away from the one true church uh -huh. and the restoration kind of concept. So the the Bible's taken on a more a bigger role, Yeah. would you say, Yeah. in the last many decades? Yes, the last decades? we use the New Revised Standard Edition. It's just sort of the, the standard, the church's standard edition. The Revised English Standard the Version? The NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version. Version, okay. New Revised Standard Version. Because it is considered um, in the larger Christian community as the most accurate interpret or um, translation of the, the original Greek texts and, and so that's the one that we use we also have available in all of our libraries we have different versions of you know different translations so people are free to use yeah you can go and and we're actually encouraged to as when we are preparing sermons to look at those different versions and those different translations and see what words are ch are different in different translations and just to kind of get a as broad a um, a, an understanding of what Don't is you, actually there. Don't you like that? Yeah. I, mean, I feel that too. And yeah. Do you use the Joseph Smith translation no, at all? we don't. Um, do you... Um, oh, it tied in with that. Darn it. Oh, well. <laughs> so, no... Jo oh, um, yeah, never mind. Okay, sorry. Angel Moroni. I haven't heard anything about the Angel Moroni. I think that's all tied up with you know the Book who of Mormon. He is, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's all tied up with the Book of Mormon, the whole Book of Mormon theology and, okay. and acceptance and, you know, your own personal sort of you can have your own personal opinions on that. Okay. That's a good one. Continuing revelation, though. Yes. You do believe in continuing yes. revelation. Yes, continuing revelation is very and important. And documenting it. Yes. Yeah. So we and have, who's entitled to receive that? Just the president? That's the, um, the, the prophet? The prophet will receive, um, will, will write these words of counsel. And then if he feels like that they are actual revelation or, or from God, then they will go out to the, um, they'll go out to the, the greater body. And, and it circulates through for, you know, the years, and it's talked about, and it's, it's, you know, people are encouraged to do their own discernment process, and to, you know, so it's, I have not seen a new section canonized yet, because I haven't been in the church oh, quite long enough, so. Okay. <laughs> but you do have um, a second coming, real quick. I, you know, I have never really heard anybody talk about the second coming and I think that that's one of those things that's along with the like celestial kingdom mm -hmm. it's like we are concerned with the here, the and, here now. and now and there are problems here that we need you know to work we on. need to work on we and now, that's body of Christ do you believe you're part of the yeah what we're the, we call, we, and yeah. you actually belong to what is it the council of Christian Can, churches yeah the or council something. churches yeah the yeah. world world council churches I think now does everybody like belong to that or non-denominationals don't I, I guess. don't know who all belongs I don't know if the Brighamites do I would I don't guess think they, they do 
are not. No, but I, I'd never heard of it as yeah, a Mormon or yeah. as LDS. But. Yeah, one of the things that struck me was when the um, world, the, the churches, you know, the World Council of Churches or whatever it was, was here in Salt Lake, and right on your doorstep, and you have no, no one representing the Brighamites there. Mm. I thought that was yeah. very, very telling. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've only got a couple of minutes, okay. Laura. You've been delightful. I appreciate your sharing. And uh, why don't we end with a, a witness or testimony, what, okay. whatever you would call it, but just how much Jesus means to you now and his, what he's done for us and that maybe you didn't understand as LDS yeah. or Mormon. LDS, yeah. But go ahead. Well, I feel like that, like I said earlier, that God has always been there. God has never stepped away from me, although I have stepped away from God <laughs> at different points in my life. And I, and I really consider myself, I've always been a God girl. I, so and it, it's always been, it's always been there. And I've always been aware of this sort of presence and this, and, and for me, the, um, the way that I have turned toward God to find God inviting and delighted and embracing of me and then letting me go when I need to turn away, um, turn away from God and maybe do some work on my own or I'm, you know, I just am feeling whatever it is I'm feeling that I'm feeling a little further away. But it's all, it, always there. God is not going to force. Faithful, yeah, yeah. not going to force you. It's not going to intrude on you, but delights when you are yeah. when you turn and and embrace God. And, and this equality that you feel from in the community yeah. of Christ certainly answers your ordained women question. It, and, it does. You know, it does. You would think you know, that we, many would. Have fallen followed that cat that yeah that program. Yeah, and, I think everybody's journey is different, you know, and and it's yeah. and it can whatever feeds you, whatever feeds you spiritually and and brings you closer to God is a is a wonderful thing. I yeah. think so. <laughs> well, you're delightful. And any last words you want to share? I guess come we... see us at Community of Christ <laughs> in Salt Lake City. We will, you know, we will embrace you. You do not have to get involved. You don't have to join. Just come and sit in the pews and let it wash over you. Let us heal you and send you <laughs> on your way. Or you can stay. Whatever, whatever it is that that feeds you. <laughs> yeah, and I felt a certain freedom, a, a big freedom in coming out of Mormonism. Yeah. I didn't join a specific church, uh -huh. but uh, but I feel that that freedom and trusting it, and being able to make my own decisions. It's very adult, yeah, you know, to make, <laughs> make your own decisions. I mean, I felt like a child all the time yeah. in Mormonism, very naive. And now to, to be able to stand. And I assume the community of Christ will continue making changes yeah. as it uh, yeah. goes through its major uh, yeah. process of, of uh, what, coming to Christ, really. Yeah. Yeah. Trying, to, trying to, <laughs> to go where Christ is calling us is, I think, what we, what we always kind of keep forefront in our minds. Where, where is God calling us today? Yeah. So. <laughs> well, that's great. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>